Let's have a look at this uh, hazard warning light. I've searched a long time after one of these and now I found one at the dumpster. It's in a pretty rough shape. There should be some black paint here. So I think everything should be yellow. Just looks like somebody spray painted it. It's quite strange. It says it's quite heavy, so I think the batteries are still in here. I think it should be one uh, sealed lead acid battery in it. And uh, how should I turn it on? So yes, let's take it apart and see how this works. There are some screws on the back here, held in by three screws. And the bottom, there is no screws on the bottom here. Got two holes for mounting. Maybe you can mount something here as well, like in a rod. So let's take the bottom off and see how the battery looks like. Using a screwdriver. Maybe this is the wrong way. Hmm. Maybe here. Yes, here we go. It looks like the batteries are still in there. Oh, look at that. Oh, it is uh, two of these uh, 6 volt uh, lantern batteries. Varta standard 6 volts. Same with that one. There are some nice uh, carbon rods in these. And now this is quite light. It looks like there are two switches here. Are they operated from these holes? Yes, there are some switches in there. Look at it, it was like a alien looking creature in it with eight legs. And I think that you actually switch between the batteries by pressing the switches. So there's actually a six volt driver in there and you change which battery you want to run on. So let's measure the voltages in the batteries. It looks like the batteries expired in 2003, or maybe 2009. So let's measure it. 4 volts. Holding the probes the wrong way around, of course. And this one is only 2.5 volts, so pretty discharged. So let's open up this unit here. I don't think this is a LED light. I think this is one of the old uh, flash tube ones. The classic uh, tubes with uh, xenon gas in them. A pretty long screws. And the last screw here. Here we go. It's held together at the bottom here. It's a shiny plate. And there we got the flash tube. Move the front as well. You've got the camera flash and the drive circuit beneath it. They're just clicked in. Oh, here we go. Maybe there are more eight legged friends in there or a charged capacitor. Here we go. Just a plastic casing. And here we got the interesting part. It's quite a little interesting circuit. Got the flash tube here, and we got some kind of uh, light sensor. Looks like a photodiode. When there is light outside, this will automatically turn off, and when it gets dark, it will uh, start blinking. This is just a normal flash tube. Uh, circuit in there, capacitor charging up to like uh, 300 volts and a 
ignition coil looking uh, inductor induces a high voltage that triggers the flash tube. So the flash tube always got like 300 volts across it. Of course, when it flashes, it discharges the capacitor. We've got two switches here, perhaps switching between the two batteries. So let's test it. I think when I push it in, it uh, turns on. And I've got the uh, six volts. Nothing happens. Doesn't pull any current. No, nope, nothing. And the other side. Nothing here. So let's try to pull the circuit out without getting zapped. After a little while of brute force, now I get this part off. I can remove the circuit board from here. And these two are actually connected together. So maybe I actually needed to have 12 volts for it. Well, yes, let's connect it to 12 volts and see if it works. Just going to put some uh, blue tack on this uh, light sensor. I think this one is a negative here. This one is a positive. Oh, here we go. Oh, it blinked one time. Yes, here we go. Look at that. It's blinking. I need to discharge the capacitor to charge up to very high voltage. Yes, it's discharged. So let's uh, reverse engineer this circuit and see how this uh, unit works. You can see a close up on the circuit. I removed the switches, making everything easier to see. This capacitor doesn't have any value on it. It just got the manufacturer, which is uh, Nissan and 45168. Maybe this is just a 10 microfarad or a 27 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. And we got five transistors here, some diodes, resistors. This thing here looks like a tunable uh, inductor, it's actually the high voltage transformer. This is a capacitor for the ignition coil. And on the back side here, a bit hard to trace it out, but I managed to do a schematic on this. This two goes uh, across this uh, flash tube, and the ignition coil here goes in a thin metal strip that goes in the middle here and around the electrodes. Let's bring in the schematic here. And have a look at it. Took a little while to do this, but it is pretty straightforward. Got the two switches here, S1 and S2. This one here is just to turn the unit on and off. And this one is to bypass uh, this part here, which is actually the light sensor part. So we can actually cut this schematic into three pieces. Got this one, which is the light sensor, the high voltage generator here. And here we got the triggering circuit. So if we begin here at the light sensor, put this large capacitor here, which is just for filtering, goes across the supply. We got this PNP transistor with a voltage divider here, consisting of this 560K and this 910K resistor here. This will pull the base of this transistor up to around 8 volts. Then this photodiode is uh, completely dark, and that will turn the transistor on. And when it turns on, current will flow here, through this 1K resistor, and turn this transistor on, which bypasses this switch here, and the current through this uh, other part of the circuit can flow here, through the transistor, and uh, to the battery. But when it's light outside, the current will flow here, pull the voltage here on the transistor up, which uh, shuts it off. This capacitor here is... Uh, for stabilization and this one here is for the timing. The high voltage uh, generator part is a bit special. We got this uh, very special uh, transformer. This is an uh, auxiliary winding, primary here, secondary here. We got this 4.7k startup resistor here. Turning the transistor on and the current will go here, through here, into the transistor and uh, through this current uh, limiting resistor here to ground. It's uh, and when that happens, you charge a magnetic field in the core here, and that will uh, pull the transistor 
down. It will actually make the base negative by pulling electrons out of there into ground through these two diodes. Pretty strange, we got this Schottky diode here and a normal 2N4148. Because when this unit actually is turned off and you get the current go here, you actually want some voltage here not all the current running through these diodes and into ground. So this actually makes like 1.5 volts voltage here, or a little bit less. And when the transistor shuts down, the magnetic field collapses and we get a high voltage here, going through this rectification diode and charging this capacitor up. And here we got a Zener diode, 5.6 volts. I don't know really why they have used that one for. Maybe just for pulling the voltage down a bit. Or maybe just for protection. And now we got to the third part, the triggering circuit. Here we got this ignition coil looking uh, transformer that induces a very high voltage to ionize the gas inside the flash tube. We got this SCR and the capacitor here. So when this main capacitor charges up, we got a little current flow going through this resistor here, charging this capacitor up to a high voltage. And here we got a timing circuit. What is potentiometer here, 100k and then 190k resistor charging this capacitor up and we got this voltage divider on this transistor making it partially open instead of conducting a full power it actually conducts a little bit and when the voltage reaches a certain level here the SCR will trigger and all the charge that's in this capacitor will go through the SCR around like this inducing a very high voltage here on the secondary of it, triggering the flash tube. And you can actually see here that the flash tube is actually connected across the capacitor. And there's only the high voltage peak here that uh, ignites it. And when it's triggered, it actually discharges all the energy in the capacitor into the flash tube. An interesting bit here is actually this diode up here, which is the same diode as here, BYT11-1000. So is that used for actually charging up this capacitor a little bit, so the power supply doesn't have to work so much. Maybe it's special to have a diode here, charging this capacitor up to 12 volts. Yes, yeah, so that's a pretty interesting circuit. Yes, yeah, so hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.